and welcome to FIG's weekly economic and trading update. I'm Mark Bailey and this is newly promoted Jonathan Sheridan. So welcome John. Hi Mark, so there's been a lot of political news particularly with the Trump failure to get the healthcare reform through and the formal triggering of the Brexit Article 50. How's that impacted the economic data that you're seeing this week? Yeah, look, it's been a really interesting week. I think that probably the main uh, factor hasn't been actually Brexit. That kind of got priced into the markets a long, long time ago and there's just kind of a formal passing of a paper with a few signatures on from the UK to the European bureaucrats um, didn't really shake the markets. So probably the more, more important uh, political uh, impact was on the Trump's um, kind of failure to get the healthcare reforms through and you know, what impact is that going to have on his tenor in terms of you know, his uh, tax implications and also his fiscal spenses. Quite a lot of uh, market ructions there. In terms of economic data, it's actually been a pretty light week. Not much happening in, in, uh, in Australia. Uh, one of the key interesting factors going forward will, will actually be how Cyclone Debbie, which is obviously torn through uh, Queensland, will actually potentially impact some food prices and whether you'll see an uptick in CPI. Now, from an RBA point of view, uh, as was seen when uh, the I think it was Cyclone Larry went through uh, 2008 and the banana prices shot up uh, and Glenn Stevens was you know, obviously worried about those because he buys his bananas at the, at the shop across the road. Um, but you know, they looked through that in terms of their uh, monetary policy target and interest rate settings. But what it's actually going to be more important for is some of the uh, bonds that we trade, some of the index link bonds that do actually link to the actual CPI, which will probably increase. So that's, that's an important thing domestically. Offshore, it's been pretty quiet. We got kind of a, a bit of a, a final read on GDP, which is actually slightly better than expected. Consumer spending was slightly better than expected as well. But again, a reasonably light week in terms of what was happening in the States. There was a bit of um, Fed talk. Janet Yellen did talk, but again, not about monetary policy. There was a couple of other Fed officials as well that came out and just said, look, we're probably expecting to see you know, three or maybe more um, hikes in interest rates from the FOMC this year. So it was probably quite a hawkish tone there, but you know, apart from that, a reasonably quiet week. So John, what have your clients been uh, interested in this week in terms of bond trading? It's been very much this week a story of early calls that, that either have been announced or happened or, or haven't happened as the case may be. So with the Royal Women's Hospital nominal bond, we saw that that wasn't called on the date as expected, um, but what we've seen is when the owner made their announcement to the UK listed market, they said that they would look to complete that refinancing by the end of June. So investors looking to get their money back shortly there. They have actually been in receipt of a number of different bonds that have paid back early. So McPherson's called 60% of their floating rate note. Um, I am gold, a US high yield bond called their 2020 issue, which we had clients invested in and also Swiss Re, which most clients would have been invested in at some stage over the last three or four years, yeah. have announced the call of their bond uh, from the 25th of May. So lots of cash coming back to clients at the moment. Um, finding really good value investment opportunities for that cash has been the theme of the week. And we've had some clients using their US dollar proceeds, bringing it back to Australian dollars mm -hmm. and investing in some inflation linked annuities where we saw some supply this week. But other than that, they seem to be just sitting on the sidelines probably waiting for the next FIG new issue. We had IMF Bentham retap their existing 7.4% 2020 bond, which closed at the end of last week uh, with an upsize in that deal due to the huge demand that we saw from our investor base. Yeah, and I guess in terms of the R RWH, um, you know, I guess we've had a few research notes out there kind of talking clients through what was likely to happen. And I think, you know, from a research point of view, we've certainly got a lot more comfortable in terms of that timeline that we should expect to see some kind of a formal announcement and some refinancing on those bonds, hopefully by uh, June this year. So again, you know, yes, they've missed the scheduled maturity date, but I think it's hopefully in process of being refinanced. So investors, unfortunately, are gonna actually get more cash, which is gonna lead to more problems down the line. Yeah, that's right. I mean, you know, having cash available to take advantage of good investment opportunities is a double-edged sword you know yeah. you've got cash to work and it's not working for you at the moment but you know we try and keep putting good value opportunities in front of clients both in Australian dollars and US dollars and and you know backed by research we see that we can find some value for our clients. So Mark what are you looking forward to next week in terms of key economic data? It's going to be actually a bit more interesting than last week so in uh, in Australia we've got uh, retail sales coming up and also the RBA uh, cash rate uh, is announced as well. No change expected there. Offshore, 
it's all going to be about Friday's non-farm payroll number. Um, uh, expectations are around about 175,000 jobs to be added with an unemployment rate of around about 4.7%. So again, that's going to be the key focus going into um, in the back end of next week. Thanks, Jonathan. Thank you, Mark. And thanks for watching. If you need any more information, please go to The Wire.